Aloha. Today is a beautiful day in Hawaii. And when we listen to the sound of the Tibetan bowl, notice how the sound helps us to connect with the amazing elements of nature that we find here and that you can find at home. Because Evolutionary Yoga Flow, based here in Hawaii, is actually a portal for you to enter into paradise. Because yoga is a pathway to find that paradise within our own skin. So let's begin with listening to the Tibetan bow, breathing in deeply, and exhale out the mouth. Again, inhale, breathing in, fill the belly, fill the chest, fill the head, relax the shoulders and the hips, lengthen the spine, and gently exhale. And inhale again, belly, chest, and the upper body. Breathe in at the very top, hold the breath for a moment. Let the tongue touch the roof of the mouth. Let the eye gaze float upward toward the third eye. Pause. Keep lifting the core of the spine and gently exhale through the mouth. Good. So in just that little bit of breath work, we can notice that we're already more in touch with the body. Uh, but today, because our theme is to connect with the prana, the life force, the amazing electrical magnetic field that permeates all things and forms a web that supports us and embraces us, gives us strength and also gives us guidance. So let's go again, let's breathe in. And as we're breathing in, let's bring the hands up to the collarbones and press down as we inhale, feeling that breath enter the body, chest into the belly, and then exhale gently, lift the hands up squeeze the pelvic floor a little bit so we're squeezing the energy at the lower part of the spine affecting the top part of the spine and then inhale again through both nostrils mouth is closed here and as we exhale listen for that aspirant sound in the back of the throat beautiful again inhale listen for the sound in the back of the throat Feel the head, the chest, the belly, the arms and the legs, and then exhale, gently draw the sitting bones together, draw the hip points together, and exhale, squeezing the breath in and up, and up to the crown of the head and beyond. So this is one of the basic movements of yoga, and it helps us to connect with the field of prana, prana being that life force. And as we connect in the different parts of the body, for instance, we're going to connect the hands to the shoulders, to the heart, to the shoulder, to the other hands. So we have this connection. Then we have the connection moving from the tailbone up through the crown of the head and then down again. So this vertical axis and the horizontal axis give us an opportunity to connect with these larger spheres of nature that provide us with this strength and with the empowerment and with the awareness that will bring us closer and closer to the higher consciousness that we seek. So let's just bring the index fingers and the thumbs together and place the backs of the hands on the inner knees and let's close the eyes so we can feel more deeply inside. And gently inhale, feeling the belly expand, expand the chest, Expand the crown of the head and feel that air circulate like light swirling in a beautiful sea of space. And as we exhale, gently squeeze the sitting bones together, draw the hip points together, draw the navel back and squeeze the breath out and let the awareness draw up the spine into the third eye area. Let's continue in that pattern by placing our hands on the lower belly. And let's gently inhale, feel the breath, push the hands away from the lower back, so we're expanding the abdomen. And then as we 
exhale, gently feel the abdomen drawing back toward the back of the waist and lengthen through the spine. So that's the pattern of our movement. The sounding of the breath is like the ocean sound or even it's been called Darth Vader sound or scuba diver sound. Ujjayi pranayama, that is the victorious breath. So we're victorious in harnessing the powers of nature, the powers of the breath into uh, a higher state of being, into a more blissful and healthier state of being. So let's place the hands on the belly, inhale, breathing into the body soul in the lower belly, feeling the appetite for life, feeling the urges and the sensuality of the lower belly. And then as we exhale, feel a drawing in to the navel as the shoulders and the hips connect right into the navel. So we feel lines of energy that cross the navel and connect at the arms or shoulders and the hips. And inhale again. Breathing is the heart of yoga. And exhale, gently feel the hands touching the belly and connecting into this important body soul, the sensuous and stabilizing part of our being. And then let's bring the hands to the heart and let's inhale into the heart. Feel the chest expanding, feel an awareness not only of the physical body, but how the physical body expanding gives us more sense of the energy around the chest. And gently exhale. And just feeling what kinds of feelings are happening in this feeling center, the heart. Inhale again. And whatever that is, if that's a deep joy or a deep unhappiness or frustration, despair, silliness, feeling of connection because we're here today in our global circle, connecting through the powers of yoga. And then let's bring the hands to the head and especially focusing here at the third eye, just above the middle of the eyebrows and inhale right into the third eye area and feel the power of choice in this third area. And exhale, draw the navel in and squeeze the breath out as we're bringing all of our awareness into the third eye area. Inhale. And gently exhale. So you can do that many times a day to recover our sense of these three portals, these three very important, what in Hawaiian tradition and many indigenous traditions is called three souls or three minds. The body soul or unahapili, the conscious mind soul or the uhane in the heart, and the cosmic soul centered in the third eye area. And these three spheres of energy aligned along the spine help us to pulse with the larger energy of the almakua. That is the collection or the constellation of ancestors and spirits and vitalities that surround us at all times. So yoga is a very ancient tradition that has many roots in common with shamanism and active imagination and the dreaming of nature. So we'll get more into that uh, later in the class today. But today, just by connecting to these three centers, we can feel an opening of this vertical channel. And then as we come to standing postures, we will open more across from the heart out through the hands. So let's bring the hands over the chest. We've already played the bowl to begin our practice. We've brought together the energies of the three centers or souls. And let's very gently take a bow, bringing the chin into the chest and honor that our whole being is entering upon this practice. And 
arms gently. Inhale and bring the arms down. And let's come into a child's pose. So the central channel of the body is known as the Sushumna. And you can think of it and feel it as a column of light. And so when we come into a child's pose, we point the toes back, we bring the knees as close as, as feels good for you, and then gently hollow the belly, drawing the navel back, and draw yourself back so that the sitting bones are reaching down toward the heels. Inhale, and walk the fingers forward toward the front of the mat. And exhale, yawn the underarm and let the chest release down into the thigh and walk the fingers forward again. Draw the tailbone back and notice how I'm consciously using the isometrics of the hands into the mat and drawing the tailbone away to increase the flow of energy from my fingers through my shoulders down into the spine and the hips and the legs and all the way to the toes. Inhale. Now, press the palms in the ground and isometrically draw the palms toward each other so they're not moving externally, but I feel that internal movement. And draw the shoulders away from the elbows. The elbows are lifted up. They're not collapsing on the ground. It's an active stretch here. And I draw my shoulder blades back toward the tailbone. Inhale and lift the palms and just move the palms right and left so that those are nice and open. Call that the queen's wave, like that. <laughs> and so we're just waving a little bit and relax the forehead down. And as we inhale, we're gonna lift up the spine and come into a table position. Inhale, let's lift the head and the tail into a dog tilt or a cow tilt, depending on your favorite animal. And then exhale, lift your navel up and draw the tailbone down and draw your nose toward the pubic bone. This is really lifting here. Inhale, lengthen from the pubic bone to the chin and the crown of the head. So I'm stretching the front body here and squeezing the back body together. Exhale, notice how I'm really lifting the abdominals up. That's a deep yogic cleansing there. When I gather my abdominals in and squeeze as I'm drawing back. And then inhale again, let's lift up. And walk the hands forward a little bit. Squeeze the thumbs and the pads of the index fingers toward each other. I still have an open V, but I'm isometrically drawing them together and lifting the wrist just a little bit so I'm relieving any pressure on the tendon here. So I'm pressing the finger pads down, squeezing the thumb and the index finger together, and then lift the wrists a tiny bit. Bring the toes under and exhale. Mouth is closed, nice long exhale here. And then inhale, let's come back down. We're gonna do this several times in a vinyasa. A vinyasa is a breathing practice we're, we're using the inhale and the exhale to mark a series of movements. So here, we slowly inhale. If you want to count, you can count to six, three, four, five, six. Toes under, exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's stay up there for inhale six. Just getting used to the posture, feeling gravity supporting us, and feeling the wonderful sense of lengthening the arms and the legs. And then exhale, bring the knees down, shoulders down away from the ears. And then exhale, let's come back, drawing the navel in, the tailbone comes down between the heels, and I'm reaching back, yawning the underarms and stretching the spine, stretching the arms. Inhale, and exhale, toes under, come into downward facing dog pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Connecting in to the earth underneath us and the sky overhead. Knees come down, point to 
Point the toes, exhale. Reach the tailbone back. Feel the side waist elongating. Forward comes to the ground. Inhale, lifting up, feeling all the chakras along the spine, those energy centers along the spine, the three souls and the seven chakras. And exhale. This is cleansing all parts of the subtle body. Let's stay there for six count inhale. And keep lifting the forearms up off the ground. Lift the kneecaps up. And then gently exhale, bring your knees down. And let's come back into child's pose. So you can go through those three positions as long as you like. And then inhale, let's lift up. And remember that our practice is a gradual path and there are stages. And this is an initial stage. If this hurts the shoulders or the wrists or anything, just come back into the child's pose. So be sure and modify and listen to your body. And then let's come into the table and let's just move the pelvis in an infinity circle and then move the whole spine up and down. So we're focusing on this spiraling nature of the qualities of water and sound and energy. There is this undulating capacity that allows us to open up more of the Sushumna connection, that connection from the head to the tail. So let yourself just explore the spine in the way that feels the best for you. It doesn't have to be regular. In fact, if it's irregular, you find more nuance and unconventional movement so you can open up any blockage you might not be aware of. Nice. I want to point out something else before we do any more downward dogs. And that is that when the hands are on the ground, we are bringing the index fingers down toward the center of the earth. And that means we're rolling in the forearm to press into the finger but we want to roll the upper arm outward while the index finger still stays on the ground and that brings the upper shoulder out. So we have these two opposing motions. We have a polarity there. And when we activate the polarity, that brings us into a deeper flow of the life force. So notice how then we're gonna plant the hands, lift the wrists a tiny bit, bringing the finger pads down Press the index fingers down and rotate the forearm inward. And then the upper arm bone is rolling outward. And keeping those two opposing spirals happening, we can easily lift and find the kind of downward facing dog pose that feels stable. Press the heels in the ground, lift the kneecaps up. Broaden the bottoms of the feet and feel a full on stretch through the body. Shake the head yes and no. And slowly walk the hands back toward the feet. So if you bend the knees, that's great. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. Um, if you bend the, the knees, that's great. The chest is resting on the thighs. Shake your head yes and no. And then let's inhale, let's lengthen the legs so we have the longest length possible from the bottoms of the feet to the hips. And then exhale, draw your navel in from the pubic bone up to the navel, up to the lower front ribs. We have a nice, even line of energy. Tailbone reaching down to the heel. And then inhale, lift the kneecaps up and feel the backs of the legs stretching. Just walk the hands back. Now, my legs can get almost straight. I'm bending them a little bit because I don't want to hyperextend the knee. But as far as you can bring the hands back, the better. Because see how I'm getting a stretch in the wrist. And that helps me to connect more deeply into the heart. Reaching the wrists back, extend the head away from the tailbone, from the heels to the tailbone, stretches up toward the sky, heels down, and then reach the wrist back to bring yourself closer to the legs. And gently inhale, let's just lift up halfway, pressing into the shins, 
follow the belly. We don't want the chin way up, we want the chin in so I get a nice length in the back of the neck. And then very gently exhale, bring ourselves back down again. Enjoy the luxurious moment of feeling that life force moving up the spine and then balance both feet evenly and gently roll up one vertebrae at a time. The arms are dangling. In fact, you can make a little circle. Keep lifting in the navel. The shoulders and the head come up last. So I'm articulating each piece of the spine as I come up. And then I'm standing in Tadasana with my hands over my heart, gently drawing the tummy up, squeezing the side hips in, feeling, I'm gonna turn again, feeling both legs like two tree trunks that are equally balanced. And that foundation of balance in the lower body increases the balance moving up through the physical body, through the emotions of the heart and the belly area, through the thinking process and through the spiritual process. So it begins by how we flow in the body. So let's bring the hands together, press the hands together. And as we do so, notice how that broadens the collarbones. Beautiful, inhale and lift your heart up toward the sky. Lower ribs come in, lengthen the crown of the head up. Press the legs down and now the whole body is in Tadasana, mountain pose, and we're connecting heaven and earth. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Let's bring the arms down. Rotate the arms out, palms up, and inhale. Looking at the thumbs, reaching the side waist up, lift the kneecaps up, and then gently exhale. Let's draw the arms out to the side and float down like an airplane. or a swan releasing into the air. Inhale. Looking up at the third eye. Exhale, let the eye gaze come down to the tip of the nose and then look at the knees. And then lifting. Lifting from the heart. The belly comes underneath the heart, the head on top and then the hands. And exhale, keep lifting up through the side waist to the underarms and feel more release in the shoulders and the arms as we bring the hands down. And then bring the hands back together in Anjali Mudra. Very nice. And then I'm going to come sideways here and we're going to go through the sunrise salute and into a series of standing postures that I think you will enjoy. And then exhale, lifting. And exhale. Lifting up the heart, extending the line from the pubic bone to the chin, and exhale. And then let's just walk little baby steps back. Remember the arms, we're pressing into the index finger, the forearm is rolling in, the upper arm bone, the humerus is rolling out and find the stability there. It should feel absolutely great. And then let's plant the right foot toward the center of the mat and float that left leg straight up and reach the heel away from the crown of the head. If this is too much, you can come down on your knees and just simply lift the leg this way. So that's part of our listening to the body and finding what's right for us today. And then if you're up there, you can go ahead and roll the leg out and bend that knee and point the left toe toward the right shoulder and look underneath that left arm. Lift your belly up and then lift the leg and slide your knee forward and come into a lunge, but we're gonna immediately turn the back foot out a little bit. Walk that right foot forward and gently inhale. And we're gonna face the right side of the mat. I know you're seeing my back, but this is good for this particular moment. Inhale, lengthen the arms apart, 
Drop your tailbone down, keep the inner left knee over the middle toes. We don't want that knee to drop in. And inhale, let's just lift that left arm up, keep below the waist, very still and stable. And then gently bring yourself over and come into Trigonasana. So the hand comes as far down on the shin as feels right for you, but there's no weight. We're not pressing in. We're just kind of touching and stabilizing and noticing that triangle here. All of yoga is filled with a lot of triangles. So even though this is the triangle pose, it replicates a lot of other triangles in the body and in nature. So inhale, look up at the top thumb. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and lengthen through the back of the neck here. And then gently inhale, reach up. And let's bring the right arm in front of us here, lifting up through this whole left side of the chest. And then gently exhale, bend the right knee. And I can bring the forearm to the thigh, or I can go ahead and come all the way to the ground. So I'm touching into the outside of the left foot. Inhale and look up with the chest turning upward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Notice how easy it is to bring the shoulders up, but that's not what we want. I'm gonna keep the shoulders down away from the ears and bring that top arm over. So I'm getting a full stretch from the back heel through that right hip, the right shoulder, through the hands. My nose is looking toward the upper arm bone. On the left side, my outer left knee is pressing into a straightened left arm. And inhale, keep your lower body stable as you lift up. And I'm going to bring this arm behind my back. Bending into the warrior pose and reach your body back. And then bend the left arm, touch the back of the neck. You can see why I wanted to do it on this side. So between the polarities of my hand at the back of the neck and the top of my right hand on the left kidney, I can stretch those two areas apart and feel a deeper sense of connection between my organs and my brain. Inhale, and then exhale, bring the arms over, reaching over, and come down. Bring this left leg back, and there we are in a plank. If that's too much, immediately bring the knees down, no problem. If you want to build up some core strength, then lift the knees and let yourself come up. Now, we're going to drop the right knee here and bring the left hip on top of the right hip. And we can bring the upper arm up here. Inhale. So this is a modified side tree pose or side plank. Inhale. Mmm, doesn't that feel delicious? Remembering those three portals, breathing into the belly, into the heart, into the head. Every time we do that, we're reminded of the deeper connection of the life and bring that hand down, line yourself up, shoulders to hips, to feet, and then lift back up into a downward facing dog. Inhale, lengthen the arms, lengthen the legs, press the heels in the ground, lift the kneecaps up, hollow the belly up, and then gently place the left foot in the center of the mat and lift the right leg here. Inhale and exhale. Lift the left leg up, turning the leg out, and then bend the right knee and point the right toe toward the left hand. And then I'm looking under my right arm at the seat. Lengthen the arms, lengthen the legs, lengthen the spine. And inhale, lift up, feeling that stretch in the deep abdominals and then bring that leg forward and plant it for warrior pose. So look at your stance, your heel in the front is reaching back directly to the outer heel in the back. And gently line up your legs so that you have power to come up into your warrior two pose, Virabhadrasana. That is the friendly warrior pose. 
friendly warrior because we're not going to war for no reason or for oil. We're going to war for love. And it really is beyond war because there's no battling and there's no fighting in the state of love that we're talking about. Inhale, breathe into the belly. Lift up your navel. Breathe into the heart. Open the wings and breathe into the head. Drop your tailbone a little bit so you have more stability. Lengthen that back leg and roll it out a tiny bit. And gently then, keeping the waist and the lower body plugged into the earth, let's bring the upper arm back. Bring that left hand forward. Relax the neck back. And then gently come over. We're going to go into triangle pose. And bring that hand down. No weight on it because we're using our core here. We're developing core strength and connecting in. The upper arm is connecting into the heavens. The lower arm is connecting into the earth. And I'm twisting my rib cage here so that I can feel that spiral from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Inhale. And exhale. Keeping the lower body stable. Let's lift up. And arch back, feel the smile emerge on the face. And draw your upper body in a curve back. And then go ahead and bend the front knee. And let's reach over, bringing your right hand to the outer foot. Outer right foot. And bring that left arm up. Opening up the waist, opening up the whole left side and then bring that arm overhead so I have a full length between the back heel and the fingertips, connecting heaven and earth. That's the great connection that human beings are designed to make. Keep pressing that back heel in, roll the left thigh out, and press the outer right knee into the elongated left elbow, the right elbow, excuse me, and looking at the left hand. Gently press the feet in and bring yourself back. And let's bring the arm behind now and bring this upper arm back and then bend it so that my right hand is massaging the back of the neck. And the top of my left palm is pressing into my kidney and I'm stretching those two points apart with my hand so I can breathe into that energy line. Feeling more of the life force moving through the body. Jai breathing. Inhale, unfurl the body, coming over, and let's bring the left leg back, and then let your left knee come down. Roll the left or right hip on top of the left. And bring the right arm up. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Lengthen the spine. A tiny micro meter in every breath. You're getting a little bit longer between the tailbone. You want to draw the tailbone forward a little bit. Squeeze the hip points together. And then gently bring the arm up. Nice. And then separate the knees here, big toes together, making that connection, and draw the navel back, tailbone down, and reach down into a child's pose. Inhale. And exhale, release the ribs down. Nice, and let's rest a moment. If we're rushing through and not feeling the satisfaction of the accomplishment and the energy flow of prana, then we miss much of the value of yoga. So it's really important that we take the time to feel. And let's bring ourselves up here. Walk the hands forward a tiny bit. Bring the toes under and lift that pelvis up one more time. Spread the toes, reach the heels into the ground. Stretch the legs long, stretch the arms long. And let's come forward into plank, shoulders away from the ears, and bring your knees down and feel the length here, reach the toes back, and keeping the elbows close into the body, 
is gently lower down onto the ground, place the forearms underneath the forehead into Makarasana. Makarasana again is the cro crocodile pose, a fun way to just completely relax into the primordial mud. And that's what this posture is about. I'll look up at you, but you want to keep your head down. You can rest the back of the neck and breathe into the belly, feeling the belly being massaged in the earth, drawing up the positive earth energy, feeling the healing quality of those energies coming from the earth. Inhale again and feel the front lower ribs, the floating ribs expanding out on that inhale. And then as you exhale, gather the navel in and up, letting the shoulders relax as you feel your power and your heat coming from the belly, the hara, that wonderful central Svadhisthana chakra in the yogic philosophy. Feeling the sensuality of the belly. And then on the next inhale, let your breath come into the lower belly and feel it expand the sacrum. The sacrum is back here. You feel the sacrum lifting a little bit. So we're feeling the fullness of the breath in the entire torso. And just bring the hands back down. Press the hands in the ground. Draw the shoulders away from the ground. Lift the elbows a little bit and press the hands in using the squeezing of the shoulder blades to help draw you up. Lift the chin, look up at the third eye, toes under, and gently exhale, draw yourself back. And slowly coming onto your tippy toes and keeping the heels high. Just walk in, keeping the navel high, and walk yourself in, walk the hands back a little bit, and fold yourself in two. And gently inhale, let's lift up halfway. Exhale, lengthen the spine in this L position, and then gently lift up a little bit more. And look up at the thumbs, feel the balance between the two sides of the body. And find the midline, you can keep facing me and I'm gonna to turn to face you. And let's bring the hands down and feel the glorious prana percolating through some 70 trillion cells in the body. And extend the legs apart, so we're in Vitruvianasana position here. Turn the toes in a tiny bit, press the heels in the ground. And let's bring the hands to the kidneys. Let's inhale, lift the chest up and find your balance between the two legs. Squeeze the elbows together and open from the sternum out to the shoulder joint. Breathing into that front chest. And then inhale, lift up. Crown of head is way high and gently come over, flat back, keeping the hands on the waist. Flat back, inhale. Lift the kneecaps, lengthen the legs, spread the toes, and then gently exhale. Bring yourself over as though you're taking your hands and pouring your pelvis upside down to empty the contents. So that then the spine is like a waterfall pouring out of the pelvis, but the legs are still lifting up into the sky. And let the head hang. Let's bring the hands down to the ground but rather than plant them, we're going to bring the fingers around the big toe. So the index finger and the middle finger wrap between the big toe and the second toe. And then the thumb touches those two tips of fingers. And then the same thing on the opposite side. The fingers come around the big toe and touch the thumb, index, and middle finger together. Inhale, lift up and stretch the arms. So I'm hooked into the toes. I can't go very far but it sure does feel great to feel that stretch along the upper back. And now I'm going to reach the elbows out to the side to stretch the deeper muscles of the rib cage and the heart and the lungs. 
So keep reaching these elbows out to the side. Notice how that releases any congestion in the heart or neck area. Breathing in. There's the three portals, the belly, the heart, and the third eye. Soften the facial features, soften the neck. Feel the heavy head. And then inhale, stretch your body up, continuing to hold the toes, and feel the rolling out of the upper arm bones, rolling in of the forearms, that pattern that we learned in the beginning of class. And gently bring the hands into the belly. Inhale. And exhale. Lift up through your abdominals and then lifting up again. Oh, that feels so great. And then gently bring the feet in. And let's come into Tadasana and take a pause and just feel what we're feeling. So every yoga practice is a ritual and an offering to the earth and to our higher nature. So when we pause and we feel the percolating of energies, it's a wonderful reminder of why we practice, for that deep connection and deep feeling of bliss and calm and contentment that we feel. And let's bring the hands down, breathe in, bring the arms up. Exhale, extend flat back, leading with the sternum, leading with the heart, but the head and the tail are in the same line. Walk the feet apart a little bit. Drop the tailbone and come into your garland pose. Bring your hands over the chest and just pause. And with your upper arms, you can press the inner thighs apart. And then bring your tailbone down. And then separate the legs out. Mmm, that feels so delicious. I'm going to press my thighs into the ground and lift my chest up. Mmm, yummy. I'm going to stretch my feet, flexing them so the bottoms of the feet are nice and long, and I'm reaching my heels away from my hips. And I want to bring the inner thighs up and the outer thighs down. And I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to slide the top of the forearm, top of the hand, to the inside of the left leg, and then take my thumb around the big toe. A little bit differently this time. My, my index ring and pinky finger extended out, but I'm touching the thumb and the index finger, and I'm bringing my forearm and shoulder to the inside of the knee and pressing those two points together while I'm keeping my right hip reaching down, and then I'm gently twisting in the torso. Yummy, 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 yummy. And I'm gonna bring that left arm up, loosen up the neck, let the left ear pour down into the ground, relax the brain, relax the heart, and gently bring that upper arm over, keeping the right hip planted in the earth. And if you can, take the outside of the foot. If you're out like this, that's fine too. Sometimes that's better, because I can get more of a twist. But you can go for the bind, Play with it, see what you're ready for. Inhale and exhale. Feel gravity drawing you downward and feel the spirit lifting you upward. Nice. Good. And inhale, let's float the body up. Mm, so my whole right side of my wing is all nice and stretched out. And now I'm gonna to go to the opposite side. Thumb goes around the big toe. Bring my elbow down and lift. Uh, actually, I'm gonna bring that hand down and press my legs down. I felt that hip uplifting. And by grounding that hip, I get an anchor for this uplift in the spine. So when we talk about the polarities that connect to bring us to this transcendent state, one polarity is the hip up to the chest and the head. So feel that polarity, the opposition, and then join it by keeping that stretch happening as we lift the upper arm, press the outer right elbow into the inner right knee. Inhale, lifting so you feel a stretch from the right hip to the left shoulder. Feel that diagonal stretch and gently bring yourself up. Inhale, compress that right 
elbow into the ground as well as the inner leg. Reaching, reaching, reaching. And if you want, you can take the outer foot. Inhale and exhale. You can go ahead and slide your shoulder in there too if it feels comfortable. Inhale. And I'm not saying there will never be discomfort in yoga, but we want to play the edge. It's important to know how playing the edge can help you to find your way by undulating a little bit and breathing and feeling more deeply into these micro spaces in the body that connect us to the macro cosmos in nature. So this is the connection that we're talking about, connecting parts of the body, but also connecting the human to the divine. So let's bring the feet together. Inhale, sit up nice and straight. And exhale, just come forward a little bit. We're not going to come so far that we lose our contact with the abdominals drawn in, the stretching in the lower back. Bring yourself forward, press the elbows into the shady side of the mountain and the inner knees. And gently bring yourself over, inhale. Breathing into the belly, the lower floating ribs, the sacrum, and gently exhale. And then inhale, float your spine up. So the head is over the chest, is over the pelvis. Bring the hands behind, fingers pointing away from the chest, and then press the palms into the ground and lift the chest as you roll the upper arm bones out, pressing the hands, and particularly the index finger into the ground. Float your heart up. Inhale. And exhale. Lift a little bit more. Inhale. Shoulders down the back, squeeze those shoulder blades together, activating the rhomboids. Notice how that opens the chest. And then gently bring yourself forward. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me better. So you want to bring the hands behind the thighs and draw your chest in. And then find your balance, lifting the feet. Find your balance there on the tailbone without collapsing. We want to keep the spine nice and straight. And then go ahead and lift those legs up for a boat pose. Inhale. Now, if this is a bit much, remember we're doing this in stages, so you can keep the toes down, no problem. We're still activating the abdominal. But we're up, up here, and we have the hands behind the legs. That's great. That's a wonderful stage, right? And then if we want, we can go ahead and extend the arms out. Keep squeezing the knees toward the chest, the chest toward the knees, and smiling. That's the important part <laughs> and then bring your hands back to the thighs bring the feet down bottoms of the feet together and gently lift draw forward loosening any congestion or tension developed from the boat pose navasana and gently let's roll up again take your hands and lift the knees together so they're they're open and stretched so much that we want to be very careful. Hands behind the thighs, lift the feet up, find your balance, hollow the belly, pubic bone into the navel, navel back into the back of the waist, and then lift, spread the toes, and then at any stage you can stop. If you want to go all the way, come into your boat pose here, let your heart reach up into the sky and feel yourself connecting heaven and earth. Bring the hands back down, bend the knees, and bring your knees apart. Sitting up, head over chest, over pelvis. In general, that's where we always want to be. And then gently curve yourself forward, bending in the lower back. So I can throw my head forward, but I'm not. I want to feel the tailbone resting into the earth, rooted right into the core of the earth, right into the very center of the earth. Just think about that, how our tap root goes all the way down to the core of the earth. And then Slowly walk ourselves forward, feeling that deep stretch in the skin on the back of the body. Get the chin loose. And let's gently roll up one vertebrae at a time. Bring the knees together. And slowly hollow the belly. Let's roll ourselves down for Shavasana. Let the arms come to the side, palms up. Lengthen the right leg, lengthen the left leg. And go ahead and stretch out so you get the maximum amount of space and opening on the ground. 
Lengthen the right leg from your navel. Lengthen the left leg from your navel. From your navel, extend out through the right arm, from the navel through the left arm to the fingertips, and allow yourself to rest completely in Shavasana. Letting go. Feeling the belly release, feeling the friendliness that you have toward your body soul. This is a good body, this is a good vehicle for this journey through life. And then breathing into the heart where we feel the deep connection with our compassion for ourselves and for each other. This is where the energies of the culture, of our families, of our relationships, it has the most potent energy. And then moving up into the third eye area where we connect with the larger spheres of being. Feel the open mind, the open consciousness, and the many dimensions beyond the three dimensions that we normally exist in. There are many dimensions that call us to inhabit the many worlds that are possible for us. Feel the weight of the body connected with gravity. Feel the embrace of Mother Earth giving us the food, the lodging, the support that we need. as much time for Shavasana if you can. We're going to move on, but you're welcome to take 10 or even 15 minutes in Shavasana. That is arguably the most important moment of yoga when we're absorbing, assimilating the energies of prana. Bring your knees over to the right, hollowing out the belly and lengthening through the sideways. And then bring the knees over to the left, same thing, lengthening through the waist area both sides of the torso. And then let the knees come up again and roll over to the right. Take a few breaths. And slowly roll yourself up until you're back in the vertical position again. Bring your index fingers and thumbs together. Feel the beauty of the day. Feel connected into the earth and the sky and to all the beauty around us, whatever you're seeing in your world. Loving what is and letting yourself be a beacon of light in this time of difficulty. In the middle of a pandemic with shrinking resources, notice how the energy that you are and the light body that you develop these are the remedies for the situation that we find ourselves. So we have a choice and we have a way. So let's bring our hands together in Anjali Mudra. Inhale. Exhale. Let's bring the arms up and down through the center to the Amakua, the Uhane, and the Unahapili again. Tracing that central axis, the column of light, the pillar of being. In Hawaii, what we call hono. That is the straightforward, balanced spine when everything is right. Touching into the chest, bring the chin down. And let's give thanks for the teachers of yoga, for the wonderful Almakua in this space in the Kealakekua Valley. And let's also give thanks to each and every person who's joined us today for Evolutionary Yoga Flow. Namaste. Please come back soon. We hope to see you many, many times. Aloha. Oh, hi. Maria here. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this yoga video. And if you did, and you'd like to help spread the good word so that other people can feel more peace and more health and more happiness, then please click the like below 
and leave a comment about what you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. Come back again and again and evolve yourself, help evolve our planet and enjoy more of the, the richness and the power of yoga and shamanism and quantum healing in your life. Namaste and aloha.